What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be educating you on everything you need to know about social engineering and cybersecurity. So let's get into it. In the realm of cybersecurity, while technical defenses against cyber threats are crucial, attackers, they often exploit the human element to bypass these defenses. This exploitation of human psychology rather than technical vulnerabilities, this is known as social engineering. Social engineering attacks, they manipulate individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions that compromise security. And in this video, we're going to talk about the concepts of social engineering, explain what it is, how it works, various types of social engineering attacks and strategies to defend against them. Social engineering, this is a manipulation technique that exploits human error to gain private information, access, or valuables. In the context of cybersecurity, it involves tricking individuals into breaking normal security procedures and divulging confidential information or gaining unauthorized access to systems. And here are some of the key characteristics of social engineering. So the first one is psychological manipulation. So social engineering attacks, they rely on psychological attacks to manipulate individuals. Then we have trust exploitation. Attackers, they often impersonate trusted entities to gain the victim's confidence. And then we have the non-technical approach. So unlike many cybersecurity attacks that that exploit software vulnerabilities, social engineering, this exploits human vulnerabilities. All right, so let's go over the history of social engineering real quick. So the concept of social engineering, this predates modern computing and has roots in traditional con artistry and fraud. However, with the advent of the internet and digital communication, social engineering has evolved and become a significant threat in cybersecurity. And the infamous Kevin Mitnick, this was a person that was once dubbed the world's most wanted hacker. And he famously used social engineering techniques to infiltrate systems and gain unauthorized access to information in the 1990s. And his exploits highlighted the effectiveness of social engineering and the purpose of addressing human factors in cybersecurity. All right, so let's talk about how social engineering works. So social engineering attacks, they typically follow a multi-step process involving research, engagement, exploitation, and execution. So the first thing attackers do, they like to gather information about their target, which may include individuals, organizations, and systems. This can involve researching social media profiles, corporate websites, and other publicly available information to understand the target's behavior, interests, and potential vulnerabilities. Next, attackers, they initiate contact with the target, often posing as a trusted entity or using pretexting to create a plausible scenario. And this engagement can occur via email, phone calls, social media, or even in-person interactions. Then the attacker uses manipulation techniques to exploit the target's trust and elicit confidential information or perform actions that compromise security. And this could involve clicking on malicious links, downloading infected attachments, or revealing sensitive information. Then the attacker uses the obtained information or access to carry out further attacks, such as identity theft, financial fraud, or system breaches. In the final step, this often involves covering their tracks to avoid detection. All right, so let's talk about the types of social engineering attacks that are out there. So social engineering attacks, they come in various forms with each leveraging different tactics to deceive and manipulate victims. And here are some of the most common types that are out there. So the first one is called phishing. The phishing attacks, this involves sending fraudulent emails that appear to be from reputable sources to trick recipients into divulging sensitive information or clicking on malicious links. And variants of phishing, this includes spear phishing, which targets specific individuals and then we have what's called whaling where this targets high profile individuals or executives then we have what is called vishing or voice phishing so vishing attacks they use phone calls to deceive individuals into providing confidential information and attackers they may impersonate banks technical support or other trusted entities to gain the victim's trust Another type of phishing is called smishing or SMS phishing. So smishing attacks, this involves sending fraudulent text messages to trick recipients into revealing sensitive information or visiting malicious websites. And we have what is called pretexting. And this involves creating a fabricated scenario or pretext to obtain information from the target. So the attacker, they may pose as a colleague, IT support, or another trusted figure to elicit confidential information. Then we have what is called baiting. 
And this involves enticing the victim with the promise of something desirable, such as free software or gifts to trick them into downloading malware or revealing personal information. Another common attack is called tailgating or piggybacking. So this occurs when an attacker gains physical access to a restricted area by following an authorized person. And this often involves convincing the victim to hold the door open or using a pretext to gain entry. Then we have what is called quid pro quo. And this attack involves offering a benefit or service in exchange for information or access. So an attacker, they may pose as IT support, offering to fix an issue in exchange for login credentials. And then we have what is called dumpster diving. And this involves searching through trash to find sensitive information that can be used in an attack. And this can include discarded documents, old hardware, or other items containing confidential data. And here are some real world examples of social engineering attacks. So the first one we have is called the target breach. And this happened back in 2013. And this was one of the largest data breaches in history. And it began with a phishing email that was sent to a third party HVAC contractor. So the attackers, they gained network credentials, which they used to infiltrate targets network, which ultimately compromised the payment information of over 40 million customers. Then we got the Twitter hack back in 2020. So when July, 2020 high profile Twitter accounts, including those of Elon Musk, Barack Obama, and Bill Gates, they were hacked in a Bitcoin scam. And the attackers used social engineering to deceive Twitter employees and gain access to internal tools. And then we have the Google and Facebook scam from 2013 to 2015. So over two years, attackers impersonated a Taiwanese hardware company and tricked Google and Facebook employees into wiring them $100 million. And the attackers used fake invoices and other documents to carry out the scam. All right, so let's talk about how you can defend against social engineering attacks. So defending against social engineering attacks, this requires a combination of technical measures, user education, and organizational policies. So here are some strategies to help protect against these types of attacks. The first one is user education and training. So you want to regularly train employees and users to recognize and respond to social engineering attacks. And this includes identifying phishing emails, verifying the identity of callers, and being cautious with unsolicited requests for information. Then we have email security. So you want to implement email filtering and anti-phishing solutions to block malicious emails and attachments. And you want to use technologies like DMARC, SPF, and DKIM to authenticate email senders. You also want to implement multi-factor authentication for accessing sensitive systems and data. Multi-factor authentication, this adds an extra layer of security, making it harder for attackers to gain access even if they do obtain login credentials. You also want to have some type of access controls in place. So you want to implement strict access controls and least privileged principles to limit the exposure of sensitive information. And you want to ensure that employees have access only to the information and systems that is necessary for their roles. There's also incident response planning. So you want to develop and maintain an incident response plan to quickly address and mitigate the impact of social engineering attacks. And you also want to ensure that employees know how to report suspicious activities and incidents. There's regular security assessments. So you want to conduct regular security assessments, including penetration testing and social engineering tests to identify and address vulnerabilities. There's physical security. You want to enhance physical security measures to prevent tailgate and unauthorized access to restricted areas. And you want to use access badges, security personnel, and surveillance cameras to monitor entry points. You want to secure the disposal of information. So you need to implement policies for the secure disposal of sensitive information, including shredding documents and securely erasing data from hardware before disposal. There's social media awareness. So you need to educate employees about the risks of sharing too much information on social media because attackers, they often use social media to gather information for social engineering attacks. And then there's regular updates and patch management. So you want to keep all systems and software up to date with the latest security patches to prevent exploitation of known vulnerabilities. All right, moving on, let's talk about the role of organizations and regulatory bodies. So organizations and regulatory bodies, they play a crucial role in combating social engineering attacks by establishing cybersecurity standards, promoting best practices, and enforcing compliance. And some key initiatives include the following. So we have cybersecurity frameworks and standards. So organizations like the National Institute of Standards and Technology and the International Organization of Standardization, they provide cybersecurity frameworks and 
and standards to guide organizations in implementing effective security measures. We have regulations and compliance. So regulatory bodies, they enforce compliance with data protection and cybersecurity regulations, such as the General Data Protection Regulation, HIPAA, which stands for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, or PCI DSS. There's also public awareness campaigns. So governments and organizations, they launch public awareness campaigns to educate citizens and businesses about cybersecurity threats and best practices. There's law enforcement and cybercrime units. So law enforcement agencies, they establish specialized cybercrime units to investigate and prosecute cyber criminals that are involved in social engineering attacks and other cyber offenses. And then we have international cooperation. So governments, they collaborate internationally to combat cyber threats through initiatives such as the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime and the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise. Moving on, let's talk about future trends and challenges in social engineering. So as technology and communication methods continue to evolve, social engineering tactics are also likely to become more sophisticated. And here are some future trends and challenges in social engineering. First up is AI and deep fake technology. So attackers, they may use AI and deep fake technology to create more convincing impersonations and fraudulent communications. And this could include realistic voice or video messages from trusted sources. We have advanced spear phishing. So spear phishing attacks, this will become more targeted and personalized, leveraging extensive research and data mining to craft highly convincing messages. We have social engineering as a service. So just as cybercrime has adopted business models like ransomware as a service, social engineering tactics, they could also be monetized as well, making it easier for less skilled attackers to launch sophisticated attacks. And social engineering as a service, this would involve selling social engineering kits or providing professional grade social engineering services to other cyber criminals. Then there's the exploitation of emerging communication platforms. So as new communication platforms and social media networks emerge, attackers will adapt their tactics to exploit these platforms. And this includes using messaging apps, video conferencing tools, and collaborative platforms for social engineering attacks. There's the integration with physical and cyber attacks. So social engineering attacks may be combined with physical attacks to gain access to secure networks. So for example, attackers might use social engineering to gather information that helps them bypass physical security measures. There's human augmentation. So the increasing use of wearable devices, smart implants, and other forms of human augmentation could present new social engineering attack vectors and attackers. They might exploit these technologies to gather sensitive information or manipulate individuals. And then we have cultural and linguistic manipulation. So attackers, they will continue to refine their tactics to exploit cultural and linguistic nuances, making their social engineering efforts more effective across diverse populations. So understanding local customs, languages, and social norms, this can make attacks more convincing. All right, so moving on, let's talk about some case studies of social engineering attacks. So examining real world examples of social engineering attacks, this provides valuable insights into their tactics and impacts. And here are a few notable case studies. So the first is the RSA breach that happened in 2011. So what happened was attackers, they sent phishing emails to RSA employees posing as recruiters and including an Excel file with a malicious macro once it was opened up. The macro installed a back door, which allowed attackers to steal sensitive information, including data related to RSA secure ID two-factor authentication tokens. Then we have what is called the Ubiquity Network Scam that happened in 2015. And what happened was cyber criminals, they used spear phishing emails to impersonate Ubiquity executives, and they tricked employees into transferring $46.7 million to fraudulent overseas accounts. And the attackers, they conducted extensive research to craft convincing emails that appear to be legitimate. Then we have what is called the Creelan Bank heist back in 2016 and attackers, they use spear phishing to target Creelan Bank employees, ultimately tricking them into transferring $75.8 million to fraudulent accounts. And the attackers, they pose as senior bank executives using social engineering to gain the trust of the employees. And then we have the Mattel CEO email scam that happened in 2015. So attackers, they use spear phishing to impersonate Mattel newly appointed CEO, sending an email to a finance executive requesting a $3 million transfer to a Chinese bank account. The executive complied, believing
believing that the email was legitimate. But however, the company did later recover the funds thanks to quick action and cooperation with the authorities. All right, so let's talk about how you can defend against social engineering attacks. So organizations and individuals, they must adopt a proactive approach to defend against social engineering attacks. And here are some of the best practices. So the first one is security awareness training. So you want to regularly conduct security awareness training for employees. And you want to teach them to recognize and respond to social engineering tactics. Training should cover phishing, vishing, smishing, pretexting, and other common attack methods. We have the verification process. So you want to implement verification processes for sensitive transactions and information requests. So for example, you want to verify the identity of the requester through a separate communication channel before fulfilling any requests. We have incident reporting mechanisms. So you want to establish clear incident reporting mechanisms, which encourage employees to report suspicious activities promptly. And you want to ensure that there are no negative consequences for reporting potential security the incidents. We have access control policies. So you want to implement strict access control policies, ensuring that employees have access only to the information and systems necessary for their roles. And you want to regularly review and update the access permissions. There's email and web filtering. So you want to deploy email and web filtering solutions to block malicious emails, links, and websites. And you want to use advanced threat detection technologies to identify and mitigate phishing and malware threats. Next, there's multi-factor authentication. So you want to require multi-factor authentication for accessing sensitive systems and data. Multi-factor authentication, this adds an extra layer of security, making it more difficult for attackers to gain access even if they have obtained login credentials. You want to conduct regular security audits. So conducting regular security audits and assessments to identify and address vulnerabilities. And this can include social engineering tests to evaluate the effectiveness of security awareness training. You want to implement strong password policies. So enforce strong password policies that require complex passwords and regular password changes, and also educate employees about the importance of using unique passwords for different accounts. There's physical security measures. So you want to enhance physical security measures to prevent unauthorized access to facilities and use access control systems, surveillance cameras, and security personnel to monitor entry points. And then there's secure disposal of information. So you need to implement policies for the secure disposal of sensitive information, including shredding documents and securely erasing data from hardware before disposal. All right. So to wrap all of this wonderful information up, social engineering, this is a powerful and often underestimated threat in the field of cybersecurity. By exploiting human psychology, attackers can bypass technical defenses and gain access to sensitive information and systems. Now, understanding the tactics used in social engineering attacks and implementing robust defense strategies, this is essential for protecting against these threats. Organizations and individuals, they must be vigilant and proactive in addressing social engineering risks. And this involves a combination of user education, strong security policies, advanced technologies, and continuous improvement. By fostering a culture of security awareness and resilience, you can reduce the effectiveness of social engineering attacks and safeguard your digital environment. Now, as technology continues to evolve, so too will the tactics used by social engineers. So staying informed about emerging trends and best practices in cybersecurity, this will enable you to adapt and respond effectively to new threats. And by working together and sharing knowledge with other professionals, you can build a safer and more secure digital world for everybody.